Guys, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I was a miserable mess at this game. And yeah, it wasn't the most smooth sailing ride, I guess you could put it that way. Oh. Oh, I popped a trophy on Bloodborne eight years ago when the game came out, so it's time to revisit it and try again for the Platinum. Wish me luck. Step one for this Platinum was to just play through the game all the way up until the final boss and just collect any other trophies that kind of come my way and just enjoy the game for what it is or at least try to amongst all the many deaths that I'll be having. Step two is going to be to save Scum and just go for those three endings in one playthrough and then step three is the hard one and that's to go through all the chalice dungeons which are brutal. And then step four is to just collect any other trophies I might have missed on the first playthrough. But before any of that, we've got to do the most important thing that you do in a game like this. And that's to make the most horrendous, horrific, hideous creature known to man. <laughs> Probably not. Like this guy should literally be placed in a museum, but we went ahead and created this monstrosity. <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Called him Rutus Salvatore, and Rutus awoken from his slumber, ready to take on plenty of bosses and demons. <laughs> and I'm assuming you can guess how that kind of went for Rutus. It didn't go too well. It didn't go too well. So yeah, five seconds into the game and we've died already, so that's... Rutus was having none of it though, he came back with a vengeance with his newfound Hunter's Axe. I did go for the Hunter's Axe over the other two weapons. It just looked the most pleasing to me and I kind of felt like Kratos a tiny bit. But not really at the same time. I mean if Kratos looked like this then god help us. I was kind of getting the hang of this game pretty early on. I was kind of feeling myself. I was feeling like a bit of a pro. Uh, <laughs> for no reason because I literally killed two random mutants. It wasn't that big a deal. This guy taught me a lesson very quickly and kind of put into perspective how difficult this game's actually going to be. Got wrecked a few more times, of course. Beat up by some dogs, which I'm kind of ashamed by. Like, literally, a dog killed me. This kind of, again, tells you how poor I was at this game. No respect for the elderly is what that is. But you do you think that's going to stop Rutus from achieving his dream of getting that platinum? No. Think again. So I start to get a hang of the combat, and I guess this game's more like you have to dodge instead of like you can't really block any attacks or counter any attacks. It's just dodge and roll, and it took a little while to kind of learn that. I started to know my place. I even came across enemies like this pig. L look how menacing it looks down there. I was like, nope. No, 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 no. I could just look at some enemies and know I am not even ready for that. I don't even have to be near it to know that. What I am ready for, though. Maybe not big brute pigs. Old people in wheelchairs. Yeah, I can take them on any day, especially when they're not looking at me. That's kind of easy. As I start building my way up to the first boss... <laughs> He's loving it. He's well proud of it. Oh dear, man. And then here it was, the first boss of the game, the first encounter, the first real challenge of Bloodborne, Father Casco... 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 Something like that. And guys, this guy was wiping the floor with me. <laughs> I thought I was trying to be fancy pulling off some cool moves and just kind of feeling myself. Dude, this guy was just smearing me across the floor. It wasn't even funny. I must have died about eight times to this. Maybe not eight. Maybe like five. I'm going to make myself. I'm going to give myself more credit than that. We'll go with five, probably. Maybe eight. But what? Well, well, sh. Too proud to show your true face, eh? Oh, come on. Too proud to show you 
So I just ventured around Yarnum a little bit more to try and build up some blood echoes and get some more upgrades. I'm bumped into this little creature, this little friendly beast. He was trying to give me some left rights, good nights, and I was like, no, 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 that ain't gonna happen. I'm not being destroyed by the first boss on the game. So I got him done on the first go, which felt kind of good. Now a trophy should have popped here, but like I said, in 2015, whenever this game came out, I did get three trophies. So back to Father Kuskunoigni. I was feeling good. I just took down the beast, who was, I mean, kind of easy actually, so I mean, that wasn't much of a challenge. But I was getting the dodges down. I kind of started to predict when certain moves were going to be pulled off. And I was using my charge attack, which I was kind of my best friend in a lot of these situations, I'm not going to lie. And I took him down with 10 blood vials to spare. Easy for the Kuskunoini. Gone. And just continue through the game. Took in the sights, the wonderful sights of Yarnum. Found secret hidden passages. Obviously we had to encounter more deaths along the way. Like, don't worry, there were plenty of deaths along this journey. I rolled on up with my boy Alfred. Alfred. And then we ran into our next boss of the game, our third boss, which was the Blood Starved Beast. And we were feeling prepared, we were feeling lucky, we were feeling good, and I mean, I probably shouldn't have been feeling that way because the fight went a little bit sour <laughs> very quickly. Alfred was coming in with the swipes and missing every possible attack that he could, so I had to kind of deal with things myself. I was throwing some extremely accurate Molotovs, like these Molotovs I think are just the most accurate thing I've ever dealt with, ever. Trust me. Miss, 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 terrible throw, terrible throw, terrible throw, terrible throw. I'm bad with them. Either the game doesn't want me to succeed with Molotovs or I'm just trash. And I think maybe it's a mix of the two actually. Let's blame the game because that usually goes down well. It's Bloodborne's fault. And then I think the Blood Star Beast was just like, I need to put you out of my misery and just absolutely annihilated me. I wasn't having any of that, so I went back in with my boy Alfred. And he did a lot better. He helped me get the Bloodstarved Beast down to a decent amount of health. I think I should be able to deal with this myself. In the space it took me to get him from this amount of health to this amount of health, I'd used up six blood vials. So, I mean, yeah, that's that's not great either. I don't know how I'm going to be able to kill some of the harder bosses later. But, but this Bloodstarved Beast got the poison effect on me, and I knew time was of the essence. No blood vials, and the health was just going down rapidly. And I knew I had about 10 seconds of life left, but luckily I managed to pull it off. Prey, slaughtered, Bloodstarved Beast. You're gone. You're done. Don't come back. Oh, and I got my first actual trophy of the journey, Bloodstarved Beast and Chalice of Thumaru. Thum... Thu Thumaru. I think that sounds... Yeah, we'll go with that. And then to celebrate, my guy Rutus just fell on the floor and died. Things were heating up, so my boy Rutus just kind of rolled up on this guy and got kidnapped instantly, so that's great. <laughs> but it's all good. I don't mind being kidnapped, I guess, if you give me a trophy for it, which I did find one called Rune Contact. That just kind of happened naturally. And then I quickly found out that I was not ready for this area whatsoever. So I ran around to make sure to get some more blood echoes, sniff this guy's awesome balls, and then came the dreaded jumps of Bloodborne. Uh... Now if you know about the Soulsborne series, from the limited knowledge that I know, you know that they have random cliffs where if you jump that way in that certain direction, you might just land on a pebble, and you might survive that pebble jump, and then jump from that pebble to this random plank of wood, and maybe, just maybe, there'll be a hidden secret passageway somewhere on that plank of wood. So I thought maybe I'll just take a leap of faith. Maybe the gods of Bloodborne are looking down on me on this day. And they weren't at all. They weren't looking at me. I just, I just died. But I did see the path I needed to go through, so I managed to make it the second time. Here we have our next boss fight, which is Vicar and Melia. Compared to the other bosses, was easy. This wasn't even a challenge. I took this down within about five seconds. Get out of here. 
and got the trophy Vicar Amelia for it. Very quickly guys before we jump into the rest of the video though do comment down below on any games that you want me to maybe tackle going for the Platinum on in the future. What I'm going to do is take three of my favourite suggestions from the comments and then we're going to do a poll where you guys can vote for which game I take on next. So whether it's challenging or fun, easy, I don't really mind just let me know any suggestions that you might have for Platinums down in the comments and like I said we'll do a poll soon where you guys can decide on what that game might be. And then it was time to go into the Forbidden Woods. That's how you know I was feeling brave. Place called Forbidden Woods, feeling like Harry Potter. I was like, nope, don't care, going in that way. This kind of gave me like Resident Evil 4 vibes of all the village people <laughs> being... I don't know, a bit annoyed that I'm there, I guess. But they made quick work of me and made sure there were traps planted everywhere. They had cannons shooting at me. They had pigs ramming me. And I walked into this certain area and I was like, mm, this feels like a boss fight, maybe I shouldn't be there. And then these three ring raves came out of nowhere and I just knew, I was like, I'm not ready for this and tried to dart. It was too late, it was too late. They had me in their clutches. So I had to buckle up and get ready to take down the Nazgul, I guess. 3v1, that seems fair. So my strategy was to just wait until they got close and then pull off my roundhouse move. Dodge any fire that they thought they could hit me with and just wish for the best, to be honest. With the power of Frodo and Sam on my side, I actually managed to take one of them out. And then things were heating up. I mean, they were shooting fire, so that kind of made sense, actually. I'm oh. And made quick work of all the Nazgul. Like they've got to be, they've got to be embarrassed by that, surely. I'd be embarrassed if I was them. But I don't really care if they're embarrassed because I got the trophy Shadow of Yarnum for killing all three of them. And just kept making my way through the game and came across Rom, the vicious, vicarious, vi victorious spider. I showed up with Damien, who didn't help at all actually. <laughs> he just kind, of, he just kind of watched me die. But I went in the second time and just speared him like a deer. And got the trophy Rom, the Vicorious, Vesorious, the Thesorious th Spider. Next up, I found my way to the Unseen Village. And this place was creepy. You had these big spider things just chilling on the buildings. I think if I was actually in the world of Bloodborne, that would have been the moment I'd have been like, yeah, I'm not about this hunter life. And I would have dipped to some other place. But big spiders on buildings are the least of my worries because we've got these old grannies that were just destroying me. They were having none of it, like they were like ready for their knitting club and I just came in to interrupt it and I mean, didn't live to tell the tale. And randomly came across Hemwick, which looked incredible. I mean, the whole game looks extremely gothic, but the Hemwick village place was one of my favourites. Again, you got old grannies with sledgehammers trying to dunk on me. And I came into this nice, cosy, family-friendly room and then the witch of Hemwick tried it on with me and bro... <laughs> Maybe the easiest boss of the game. Don't even try that again, the Witch of Hemwick. What were you playing at? I used two blood vials and I still think that was too, too many. But it's okay, I got the Witch of Hemwick trophy for defeating her. And when I was feeling a bit more ready, I went back to the Unseen Village. Tried to take on the One Reborn. And that didn't go too well. So the second time, with the help of Defector Antle, I was able to destroy the One Reborn and got the trophy of the One Reborn as well. Side note, I love how well designed some of these rooms are, but I touched this mouldy corpse's shoulder and got the trophy Nightmare Lecture Building for doing so. So this is one of the few things I did after search up, which was how do I get to this castle to get the trophy Canehurst. Canehurst Castle, again, one of my favourite places of the entire game, so well designed. It's kind of like if Hogwarts was a place where you go to die. And then at the end of this castle was our next boss. I feel like this guy probably should have been easy, but he took me so many attempts. He just kept spamming these red schools and bullying me, throwing me off the castle. Just absolutely annihilating me.
Then on this run, I was feeling pretty good. I was feeling good. I was starting again to learn his moves, know when to dodge and roll. And he got down to the wire. I had zero blood vials left, and he had about one-sixth of his health remaining. And he nearly got me good with this hit. And I knew, I was like, I've got to go for it now, I've got to go for it now, and just spammed R1 and managed to kill him. Got the trophy Martyr Ligarius for doing so as well. That trophy felt good. So after that castle was done, I was feeling good about going on to the next area in the main story. And that quickly bit me in the arse because I got trapped on some more environments, which was a lot of fun. Rutus was taking his time to sniff a bit of grass when he got pushed off a cliff. I had giants throwing boulders at me. I had these alien creatures just sucking my face off. But somehow I managed to make my way through it and show up to the next boss of the game. And she wasn't too bad. She sh I was about to say she shits hard, but you know what? <laughs> Maybe she does that as well. She hits hard, is what I was meant to say, but she can't take many hits either. Like one swing to her face and half a health pretty much gone anyway. So she got me the first time, but the second time I went in, I pretty much destroyed her. Just kept making sure to swipe her face over and over and over again. Until eventually she was crying about it and just, I guess, submitted and let me kill her. <laughs> so she, she'd had enough. And I got the trophy Amy Gadala for killing her, along with Chalice of Ailing Loran. We were kind of getting towards the end of the game, so I thought it was time to go off to, like, bigger Hogwarts. And we had small Hogwarts, now we've got big Hogwarts. And this place was spooky, and it wasn't for the faint of heart, which I found out very quickly. And again, this was one of those moments where I just knew, I was like, this place is just not the one for me. Spiders were killing me, bro. Spiders, like the weakest enemy ever. But again, somehow I managed to make my way through all of that. Take down this annoying boss called Nico Lash. Got the trophy Nico Lash, host of the nightmare for doing so. And then it was on to one of my favourite bosses of the game, which was nice because we just had one of the worst bosses of the game. Went on to one of the better ones. I felt like her attacks were fairly easy to read because she was quite slow and when she did hit you, she didn't take that much health off you anyway. There were a few moments where she almost got me. I feel like that's when you get out the flurry of things, like when you just start losing your head and they just keep hitting you over and over again. It's like, hey, get back on track, we need to get back onto this. Which luckily I was able to manage to do and take her down on the first attempt as well. So yeah, not the hardest boss, but definitely one of the more fun ones, I think. And I got the trophy Murgo's Wet Nurse for killing her as well. After that, I knew we were basically getting towards the end of the game as the workshop was on fire. And in the trophy guide, it says once the workshop's on fire, make sure to do the save thing as you're about to go to the final boss of the game, basically. Before doing that, I just made sure to clean up some miscellaneous things like killing some random people who were lying on tables. Take on some more optional bosses, like Dark Beast Paul, which was not that hard very easily, especially with Defector Antol, who's returned, but with a flamethrower this time. Wrecked. Made quick work of that and got Dark Beast Paul for killing that beast. Also made sure to just do some more exploring that I might have missed out on. And got the trophy of the choir for doing so. <coughs> And then took on arguably the easiest boss of the entire game, Celestial Emissary. Like, I feel, I feel like I'm ashamed that I actually even got hit by this thing a few times. But I made quick work of this bug and got the trophy Celestial Emissary for killing whatever that was. And also the trophy Rune Master, which was for acquiring an extremely precious rune. Now, this is another thing that I did have to admittedly search up, which was to find the abandoned old workshop in the real world to get the trophy of the Source of the Dream. Then it was on to take on the final optional beast of the game, which is a, burri a burrito... Daughter of the Cosmos. I mean, the boss design looked really cool, but again, just was not that hard to deal with.
I, mean, I did almost die a couple of times and I was on my final blood vial. So, I mean, I'm chatting all this and did actually almost die, but still. I managed to pull it off on the first time and got the trophy. A burrito. <laughs> Daughter of the Cosmos. Alongside Chalice of Is... 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 is Isis. I don't maybe not Isis. I hope not Isis. And that was basically all the optional bosses, all the pretty much optional trophies that I could really go for. So I made sure to start wrapping things up by fully upgrading my axe and getting the trophy weapon master for doing so. And there was a gold trophy as well to get every single hunter's item in the game. And again, admittedly, I did have to search a couple of these up. I had most of them towards the end of the game, but there are about three or four that I did have to search up. I managed to get the final one, which gave me the gold trophy hunter's craft. And then it was time for admittedly the hardest part of the entire game. I made my way into the first dungeon of the game and things were going well I was just taking on each boss at a time they weren't too difficult I felt like maybe I was at a good level to do so And dungeon one, no problem. There were six dungeons overall and each one was to get harder and harder and I felt like I got through the first three fairly easily I even managed to get the trophy Blood Gem Master at some random point as well. But there did come a point around Dungeon 4 where I just knew like things weren't going well. I needed to level up a bit more. So I thought we'll put the dungeons aside and just focus on the endings for now. So one of the three endings was very easy. You just had to submit your life and die basically which was kind of cute. <laughs> is a word for that. <laughs> I've got the gold trophy Yarn and Sunrise. Now endings two and three are a little bit harder because you do have to deal with boss fights. Ending number two is to just kill Gurnum, Gary, and I got so close the first time, like this close to killing him. I don't think you can get much closer than that, to be honest. But after a few more attempts and a bit more practice, I was able to start to whittle him down and got very, very close on this attempt. And I was able to pull it off and defeat the final boss of the game, which gave me the trophy Honouring Wishes for getting the second ending. And then it was on to the third and final ending of the game. And for that, I had to defeat that boss again. But then after that appeared another magical mystical boss, which was Moon Presence. And this demonic red tentacle octopus looking thing did not mess about. Like she had moves where she'd just pull it off and it would just take all your health off instantly. And somehow I managed to make it through the fight with zero blood vials and get her down to half off her health. And I thought at this point, I was like, okay, there's no point even trying. I guess I'll just learn her moves, learn a bit here and there. I actually managed to get kind of close and somehow, somehow, since zero blood files from a halfway point, Managed to pull it off and kill off Moon Presence and get the final ending of the game oh, good hunter. and the trophy Childhood's beginning. Now that that was done, it was back to trying out all the dungeons and trying to finish off dungeons four to six. And things did not go well, really, at all. This alone took me about three days to try to work my way through some of these dungeons. I had certain bosses that were just not letting it slide. But practice makes perfect and I was able to slowly work my way through these dungeons. 
And I will say, Dungeon 4 was tricky. Dungeon 5 was the hardest out of all of them because they just randomly half your health. It was so hard. Again, the bosses weren't even too difficult. It's just because I had half my health throughout the entire dungeon. Worked my way through it and finally was able to get to the final dungeon of the game and somehow was able to make my way to the final boss of the game, Yarnum. Thumerian Queen. Now this is the challenge apparently, like this is where you need to be like level 120 plus to even attempt to deal with this boss. And I was about level 110 so I wasn't too far off that. But me and Wally and Olek, we'd formed a bit of a bond, we were like pals, we were bros, so we just kind of had a little chat, we went in there and just started going to work. And I'm gonna be honest, like this boss was not that difficult, I think in my head, because so many of the bosses leading up to her was so difficult, I thought she would be a pain. I'm sure if I went in by myself she would have... I don't know if I'd be here living to tell the tale, we'll put it that way. But Olek and Wally Boy were just holding on for dear life. I think they knew I needed this. They were like, we need to do this for Rutus. And sadly, tear rolling down my cheek for each of them. They did slowly die off one by one. Rest in peace, Wally. Rest in peace, Olek. So when she had about one fifth of the health left, it was basically just up to me. 16 blood vials, which was plenty to get through it with. And again, her moves hit hard, but she was pretty easy to dodge for the most part. But like I said, I was just very surprised because this boss was not as hard as I thought she was going to be. Managed to take off more and more of her health as it went on. And eventually, even with five blood vials left, was able to pull off the final swipe. And took her down. Took down Yarnum Thumerian Queen, my first try, which I'm actually very proud of. Again, I am not great at these games, but managing to do that first try, I was very happy with. And again, grant most of that to Oleg and Wally, because they did take a lot of the heat off my back, but hey, I'm, I'm happy with that one. That was a good attempt. And for that, we got the gold trophy Yarnum Thumerian Queen. All that was left to get the platinum was to get two weapons that I missed out on. So I did have to go into New Game Plus to pick both of these up because one of them I missed and one of them you need to buy after killing the final boss anyway. So I killed the final boss again, went into New Game Plus, just speed ran my way through the game, took down this kind of innocent. I did feel a bit bad about doing this, but I did have to kill this guy to get his badge to be able to buy one of the secret weapons. And he gave me an item that basically unlocked one of the weapons that I needed to buy. Moment of truth. So I bought both the Burial Blade and finally the Blade of Mercy and was able to get the trophy Hunter's Essence for acquiring every Hunter weapon. And finally the Platinum Trophy Bloodborne for getting every trophy in the game. Oh, man. Hold well on, Rutus. <laughs> Good job, Rita. Rita's did it again. Platinum number 213 goes to Bloodborne. And what a brilliant game it was. I think, may I, I'm unsure if I prefer this or Elden Ring. I think maybe I prefer the world to Bloodborne and like the design and the gothic feel to it. But again, I think some of the bosses in Elden Ring are just great. It's a hard one to pick between the both, but I really, really enjoyed the game Bloodborne. A good challenge as well. It wasn't like so hard that it was frustrating. There was a couple of bosses in there that were really annoying, especially in Dungeon. Dungeon 5 I just think was ridiculous. So gameplay wise I'd go a 9 out of 10 for Bloodborne. Story wise I'd go like a 6. I'll be honest like I understood most of what was going on but not the ins and outs. I didn't really go researching all like the lore and the backstory. I feel like it's one of those games where you do have to read into it a bit more. The environment though was definitely a 10 out of 10. And as for the platinum difficulty I feel like I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Again there were some moments that really did I, that I really did struggle with but it never felt like it was impossible. It always felt like I could get there if I just kept trying. So overall rating for the game, I'd give Bloodborne an 8.5 out of 10. Incredible game, I can see why you guys love it so much. But there we go guys, that is the Platinum Trophy for Bloodborne. Do leave a like if you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate it, and I'll see you for the next Platinum, whatever that might be. Until then, take care. Peace.